I am so happy and delighted to have a wonderful woman in the podcast today. It's Marie Diamond. And we met in LA, I think three months ago, and I met her and I was like, okay, you have to come to my podcast. I really, really want to talk to you. And you said yes. And so here we are now. Thank you so much for taking the time and being here on the show. Well, Laura, it was a pleasure to meet you in LA and it's a pleasure to be here with you and all your uh, fans and people that are really following you. Yeah, thank you so much. So um, I already introduced you a bit in the intro and um, I would love you also to talk a little bit about your story, uh, how it happened that you do today, what you're doing. And I mean, you have such a fascinating a story also of, of your success and how everything developed, especially in the topic you were in. So um, I would love you to just maybe let's go back 20 years. Where have you been 20 years ago? Who has been Marie back then? And what, what were the things that happened? Well, I will go back like 25 years ago Perfect. because that's actually when I really shifted uh, into this field. So um, I was at that time a lawyer uh, for the Belgian and European government. And um, I became a lawyer because I had this vision when I was 15 um, after a near-death experience that I was um, you know, on the other side and I saw these beautiful beings of light and they said, you have to go back because you're here to enlighten more than 500 million people. And so at 15, of course, you have no idea how to start. So I just started with daily practicing, uh, being good to people, being nice, being friendly, trying to make a difference in my own school, in my own community. And um, But I already knew at that time, as I already had a spiritual teacher, and he told me when I asked him, why did I attract all this bad luck? Why did I have this accident? And he said, Marie, you have bad feng shui. And because of that, I started really going deeper into what feng shui was about. I was meditating quite um, a lot every week. I even had already a meditation group that I started at 15. Um, wow. And so, but at 18, I thought like, you know, really making a big difference. How do I do that? So I thought like, what if I become a politician? What if I become a diplomat? Like I, I could see myself working in the United Nations. So in order to do that, the best entrance for that was becoming a lawyer, right? So I became a lawyer. I said, oh, study also criminology, a lot of management courses. And um, then I ended up in the government working as a lawyer for a department And I thought like, you know, that's good. I'm, I'm contributing to create order, to create harmony um, in the government. But after five years, I kind of figured out that was not my thing. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and that hitting a wall because um, I, I made a difference, but I was not using the knowledge I already had. I already since then had an enlightenment experience. So People are always asking me about personal advice. We're always asking me, you know, what can I do with this problem, this problem? So I started a consulting company 25 years ago, and my first clients were actually the politicians that I had been working with. So that was really interesting. And top managers, uh, because they saw that I was always joyful. I was always in peace. And they were like, how do you do this? So I started teaching them meditation, basic steps for feng shui, And then I went public and I started, you know, teaching thousands of people. And um, but after like five years, six years doing that, I thought like, you know what? I'm still in Belgium, but I'm originally from. So how can I reach 500 million people if I'm stuck in a country like Belgium? So then I um, at a certain point, I really followed my intuition and I moved to America. And within a few months, I. Um, I actually attracted a lot of top um, authors, um, celebrity clients, and um, I also attracted to advise Jack Canfield, who is the author for Chicken Soup for the Soul and Success Principles. And um, I had put on my vision board when I moved to America, I am going to be in a movie seen by millions of people that will transform the world. And I put it in my success direction. We'll go deeper into that later, I hope. And um, so I was invited by Jack Canfield in the Transformation Leadership Council, who is like the top 100 speakers and authors from America. And he invited me to join. And, I, you know, I was 
not known at all, but he did not know anyone else from Europe and he wanted me to be representing Europe. So I did. And the third time we were coming together, um, somebody came um, that was known as Rhonda Byrne and she had this little movie called The Secret and she was asking for interviews. And um, I said yes to that interview. I delivered the interview. And um, from that moment on, I became part of a movie that has been seen by millions of people that transformed the world. And I start talking in the law of attraction that there's a, a different road than the mindset, that there's a different road than the spirit. Um, it's actually the road of the environment, that if your environment has um, you know, strong messages, that it will help you with the law of attraction. And so I always say I used my own methods to get into the secret. And now we have reached definitely more than 500 million people with the secret. So I could say, check, I've, I've done that. Amazing. I Amazing. So, okay. There were so many things <laughs> in that story where I would like to go back to. So the first thing, um, I met a few people already who had a near death experience. And it's for me, it's really fascinating because they all say the same. <laughs> they all say it was beautiful. They all say there were beings of light. Uh, they all said, I, I never felt that lo that much love and, and beauty and like so close, let's say, to God or to the to the energy of, of pure love. So you were 15 when you had a near death experience um, by, by an accident. You said you had an accident. Yes. And yeah, OK. So could we just uh, could you just take us back for a moment to that yes. near death experience for everyone who never heard about it or who's like things like this don't exist so tell, tell us more about it Of course so I, I came back from school and um a truck um, um actually bumped into me and I um was catapulted um, in a place um, on the street where there were all pebbles and, you know, I hit my head. And so um, the ambulance came. They declared me dead. So they had put a fabric over me already. But um, one of the witnesses of the accident had run to my home. It was literally five minutes from there. And, um, you know, went to my mom. I said, you have to come. Marie had an accident. So she came there and I already was covered with the fabric. So they already had given me up. And she started yelling, you know, you really have to keep reviving her. And so they put me in the ambulance. And um, at that moment, I saw myself floating like on the top of the ambulance, looking at my own body and seeing somebody trying to revive me. And I see my mom and I'm thinking, I still remember thinking, what is my mom doing here? Because I was, she was not with me, right? And um, and I started looking and I saw this ambulance guy and I thought I was 15. I thought, oh, my God, he's so cute. You know, he had like curly blonde hair. We'll never forget how he looked. And so and then I just left through like all dimensions. It was like, you know, if you take the airplane and you go, um, you know, and it's kind of cloudy and you go through the airplane, it's like layer after layer of clouds. Yeah. Well, that's kind of what it was. It was like going through, like I was on an airplane going through all these clouds, all these different layers and became lighter and lighter. And instead of seeing the blue sky um, in the air, um, it was like light. It was not the blue sky. It was just light. And there were uh, beings of light. Um, one of them I, I, I recognized was uh, my spiritual teacher that has been, um, you know, guiding me since I was seven. So he was there in his, what I call a light body. And they were just like looking at me and saying, well, um, and they were just telepathically, like they were telling me, like, you're not ready yet. You have still a task. This is what you need to do. And, and I said, okay, it was like, matter of fact for me, right? Um, and it's not so much the feeling I had, it was more the light I saw. It was beautiful energy. And um, and I don't really remember how I got back, but like three, four days later, I 
got back into my body. I remember getting into my body literally and there was still white around me because I was in the hospital and they put me in a darker room. So I saw light from a distance, but I didn't have my glasses on. I, I'm, you know, as you see, I don't see without glasses. And um, so I did not know where I was. And I remember taking my hands and feeling the sheets, like the crispy sheets from a hospital bed. And I'm like, oh, I'm not there anymore. And then my mom came in and uh, I, I just I just shared with her, like, what did you do in the ambulance? What, what was this guy? And she's like, but you were dead, Marie. You know, you didn't have any life sign. And this is exactly how this man looked like. And yes, I was with you in the ambulance. And I said, but that's not normal because I was not with you when I was having this experience. And um, so then um, they wanted to replace my face because, you know, all the skin was gone from falling on all the pebbles. And so they wanted to put other skin on there. And I refused. And I said, Mom, I I will heal myself. So for two weeks long, I just put my hands on my face. And um, two weeks later, I had the most beautiful skin again. And the doctors did not understand that. So I refused completely uh, skin transplant. And from that moment on, I knew something really shifted, not just in my consciousness, the, the love I felt for people. So I had a huge love for everyone from that moment. I had I was a loving and a, I think a good child before, but there was a whole other level of commitment to make a difference in the world. And I knew I had healing powers um, for myself, at least, you know, at that time. Um, and I started every day. There was like every day I would wake up in the morning and I still do. And I say, OK, I'm here to enlighten more than 500 million people. Universe, God, show me how. And if that's one person, I make a difference. If it's a podcast, if it's in a movie, if it's a consulting, if it's a personal mentoring session, I, I always focus on making the most difference in a day because I don't know how long my day will be and how long I will still be on this planet. And I'm totally fine because I have no uh, fear anymore for going back to the next level in my journey because fear of death has gone. That's really beautiful, really inspiring. And yeah, so I think it gives so much um, hope in a positive sense to not be so um, to not think that when you die, it's over, it, you die and it's just a new beginning of something where we are not even aware of what, what comes afterwards. Yeah, that's yeah. beautiful. So you said uh, when you were uh, after the accident, uh, you had the spiritual teacher and he, he or she, it's a he. he introduced you to feng shui. And yes. um, can you tell us a little bit about that? Like, how did you start with it? What did you learn about it? How did it change your life? Well, um, the first thing was, I was, as I said, I was asking him, why does this happen? And he said, Marie, you have bad feng shui. So in uh, what is feng shui? Feng shui is an energy system that was, um, I would say, of understood by the Chinese about 4,000 years ago. And feng shui is really, I call it the quantum physics of the environment. Um, we know that when you have a thought that there's a resonant field with your thought and that you will attract whatever you're thinking. But um, I started understanding from what he was sharing that the environment has a mindset of its own and that everything that's around you is affecting you nonstop 24 hours a day um, the images, the colors, the positions of your furniture, um, the statues, everything is subliminal affecting you. And so I was sleeping in a bedroom that was like a handover from my sister. So every image I was still there was from my sister. I hated that bedroom. I would try to not go to sleep as long as I could. Still reading as long as I could. Therefore, that I have my <laughs> eyesight that went back really wrong. Um, so there was something wrong with that bedroom. And if I look from after studying feng shui, I was sleeping to the wrong direction. I had the wrong colors around me. Um, in my uh, health direction was the sink. So every day I was actually washing and flushing my uh, health. In my success direction was a cabinet full of junk. 
Um, so there was like my personal energy was really wrong there. So what I decided right away, I asked my parents if I could move to another bedroom, what was towards the west. Um, I also was sleeping in the north area where there's no sunshine coming in. So I was sleeping down to the west. I painted it in orange. I love orange and white furniture. Um, I I started painting my own images, what I actually talked about in The Secret, you know, the artist that was drawing his own pictures. I did that myself at 15. So I did not have any friends. I was bullied at school. I was very smart and intelligent, but I had no social life. So I just put all images of friends and romance around me. And within two weeks, I had my first boyfriend. And I was not that good looking. So I was like, and I really got this very hot guy that was interested in me. I was like, wow. Uh, then the bullies stopped bullying me and became my friends, what was really interesting. Um, so my whole social life changed around. And I've started feeling so happy, more happy than I've ever felt than living for 10 years before in that other bedroom. So there was this big shift in me. And so I really understood that the environment was affecting my mindset, but also my mood was affecting also my health because I was really doing very well there. Um, I did not have any bad luck happening anymore. Um, I felt like I turned from like an, an ugly duckling to a beautiful swan in that in that room. It was like, all this good energy start happening. And that's where I really understood how the environment is affecting a lot of things in myself. And then I really started teaching, uh, studying, and then teaching when I was 31. Um, I went to, to Malaysia, started studying with the grandmasters. And from there, I started my own Diamond Feng Shui school. And I started understanding that, like with law, as a lawyer, everything has... Um, you know, steps, everything has a procedure in law. Well, there's also a procedure in making sure your environment is supporting you. So that is for me is feng shui. It's very logical for me. And so I love explaining very complex information in a very easy way. And um, I've seen that teaching people to understand that if your foundation is not strong and your foundation is where you work, where you sleep, where you live, that's your home. And if you are not organizing your home, how can then your mindset build up to be positive? If you have a, a clutter, chaotic, uh, wrong images all around you, how can your mind that is within you then that sees everything all the time be organized, be focused, be um, attracting the right things? So for me, it's the Earth Foundation. And um, as I was teaching first people meditation and enlightenment, um, I started understanding that if I did not bring them in also in a good feng shui, that they would not manifest that enlightenment. For me, it's all about feng shui creates enlightened homes. Mm -hmm. And so when that is in alignment and beautiful, then the energy goes to the next level. Beautiful. And so interesting because I think it's, it's such such an important aspect of creating your life but it's so often forgotten like everyone is just doing which is good like the internal work which is of course a huge part but i think it's such an important aspect that you that you show that of course uh, you are also your your um, surrounding you are also what what is all the time what you're seeing what you're hearing what you're what you're feeling so um, I think it's so so interesting, and um, you said because I'm I'm really new to feng shui. Like I I mean I know it, but I never um, uh, used it. So uh, you said uh, things like the direction of the bed and facing west, and uh, the direction of success. Could you maybe talk a little bit more about yes. that? What of yeah. course. So there are a few steps. Um, the first step is always you want to see the incoming flow. So um, like now I'm sitting on my desk um, and I see the incoming door. So whoever opens the door, I can see them. That is what we call a power position. So think about the king or queen, a president. They always will sit or a CEO of a company. They will never sit with their back to the door because then they become vulnerable. They don't see the opportunities. So I always say go and sit in the power position um, in whatever meeting you have, 
whatever. Even if people are not with you in the room, make sure that you can still see people coming in. So don't face with your desk the wall or the the window and to have the door behind you will totally uh, lower your energy about finances, about career. So always put yourself in a position you can see the door. Yeah. So that's the first thing. The second thing I always say to people, make sure that it, you declutter around you. Yeah. So make sure that um, the things around you, you, there's space. Yeah. The more space there is, the more the universe can bring you whatever you want. It's not just clearing space within you because a lot of people say, well, you need to clear, you know, blockages within you and said, that's great. But if you have cleared within but you whatever you see subliminal is all the time clutter when you wake up on your nightstand you come down in your kitchen you know you go to your bed your bed is not made i mean how can you be in harmony when all this is happening so you you really need to reorganize this declutter and then uh, the third one is there is something personal to feng shui we call it your personal energy number so based on your birthday and gender male or female you actually have directions compass directions that are stronger for you than others and so you can go to the website marydiamond.com and get your free energy report in your free energy report you will be asked your birthday your gender and we actually calculate your energy number the energy number will give you four directions, a compass direction for success and money, one for your health, one for your relationship and one for your wisdom. Now, the success one is the first and is the most important one. So whatever you have in your success direction, so you're holding down a compass, you will then find out where is the success area in your home or in your office, or in your bedroom, or in your living room. Whatever is there at this moment has been resonating with you through the quantum physics field, has been resonating with you about success. So if you have put there a garbage bin, or you have put clutter there, you have been trying and getting your success out, but the corner, the area in your home that is resonant with that is blocked, then the message will not go out. But if you place instead there, I don't know, a book uh, that you have written or um, your business cards or books on success and money or any symbols on that, then you will actually tell the universe um, that is what I resonate with and this is what I'm sending out. And I always say the law of attraction has three aspects. The one is the spiritual law. That is how you connect in with God and the universe through meditation and prayer that is something um, that you can learn to do better. But most people, for sure, people that are watching here, have already good spiritual luck because they have already established some good things in their life. The second one is your earth, your um, human luck, and that's how you think, how you feel, what you do. And I'm sure all the people that are watching this already are focusing on that, right? So, but there's a lot of discipline that you need to think positive all the time, right? To feel good all the time and to take daily action. I mean, and not to procrastinate. So there's a lot of work on that. And that's the mindset aspect. But there's a third luck, and the third luck is your environment. And the environment is how you resonate with where you sleep, work, and live. And that is the easiest part to change. I mean, changing your desk, hanging a different image, like um, putting different symbols out, uh, reposition your bed. Um, you will actually, you do that once, or you do it a few times per year, but it's not like a daily thing, but it affects you daily. It's not an, an, a disciplinary thing that you need to do, but it gives you much more focus and concentration. So that's what happened with the people in the secret. You know, things were not manifesting really well for them, not for the producer, not for the creator, not for the publisher. So not for some of the people in the secret. And so when I came in, and that's why I started helping them out, and that's why I got the nickname, The Secret Behind the Secret, <laughs> right? Because they were all stuck, you know? And so after we moved everything around, then the flow started happening. So I would say, you know, working on your spirit, that's a daily practice. Working on your mindset, on how your behavior is, 
the actions, that's something daily. But the environment, it is the missing link for most people. They haven't focused on it. So they can start very easily with a report we have. And um, it, I think it's about 15, 18 pages. And you can really go and step by step do a lot of things. And it's interesting. It's like all the things, the goals you have had, you know, you put your goals in your mind. But what if your environment is reflecting your goals? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so as they're reflecting your goals, things go in a flow, go into a medit- um, like a constant message to the universe because we have goals and we forget about them, right? Again, so we write them down and perhaps you have made a vision board, but where do you place your vision board? Well, I have seen people placing it everywhere in their home, except sometimes in the place that is their success direction. When you place your, your success board there, and that's what I have done. That's how I got in the secret by really practicing this, that an unknown lawyer from Belgium right, got into one of the most known movies in the world is because I totally practiced this work. That's amazing. It's so interesting. And I mean, the beautiful thing is that you are like the living proof <laughs> that it really works. And um I mean, also for me, I mean, I manifested things in my life. Uh, it's just maybe I just uh, like from my subconsciousness, I put my vision board there where it's supposed to be because um, like, I mean, I have my vision board. It's standing right next to my bed. So the first thing I see when I wake up is my vision board. And um, it's like a big wooden um, yeah, thing. And um, it's really, I, I sometimes look at my vision board and I call it my magic board because it's really, it's everything on it. Really everything came true. And there are things on it. I remember when I put it there, it was, I didn't know how even, like with you with the movie, I, I didn't even know how this ever could happen, but it happened. So yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. Well, I think that's a really good point, what you're saying. Um, I say sometimes to people, make sure you see it as much as possible every day. So when you wake up, that's always a good place. In a bedroom, I always suggest to have your vision board or the office if you're daily in your office. because um, And take even pictures of your vision board when you're traveling, right? So you can look at it in the morning like, okay, this is what's going on. Um, Connecting with your vision board because some people make it and then, they forget about it, right? You have to connect with it because it's it creates a, a magical flow when you do, right? So I think you're doing a really good thing. But if you would have placed it like, let's say, uh, in your um, cupboard or in a cabinet or something, you would not have seen it. Yeah, yeah. So by seeing it every day, and I do that too, I have my vision board and I go and talk to my vision board every day. You know, there are some things that I see then I'm thinking, oh, this is really... Yes, I'm going to focus on this. Um, you know, I did uh, that with, um, you know, we, we met at Mind Valley. Um, and so um, I put that there. I actually, um, I have not really reached the German um uh, public and well, so it will happen now <laughs> this year, you know for this year on my vision board was to connect more with the german uh, i'm sure that i have german students but um online but um i've never really connected with the german field uh, i i did some work in austria but not like you know germany and so one of my goals for this year was to really open up the german field and so because i love germany i've traveled there a lot and so I was like, when you came to me, I was like, my team knows my goals and like, oh, Marie, this is- <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> that's really amazing. Yeah. And also uh, regarding the vision board, uh, when you were just talking about talking to your vision board, um, I have the vision board standing there. Like when I wake up, I look at it and I always breastfeed my son in the bed, like sitting in the bed. And I always look in the direction of the vision board. So I'm every day I'm sitting there like three, four times a day for 20 minutes, just looking there and being really happy with my son feeding him. And I think this is, and I'm always, um, I have um, written down on my vision board um, in really big letters um, on the ground. Thank you. Yes. So whatever I do when I look at my vision board, because I know it's already everything, it's already reality. It's just 
yes. manifesting right now. So I'm just so thankful. And this is the way I, I connect my vision board. I'm just like, thank you, thank you, thank you that it all happens just the way it is or better, I always say. Yeah. Well, I, those are two really good points. You know, I sometimes see people and they look at their vision board and they're like, oh, this hasn't manifested yet. Oh, this will be so hard. And said, so you have to go with a lot of joy and gratitude yeah. to your vision yeah. board. Like, oh, thank you for yeah, yeah. this. This is how I talk, yeah. right, uh, to my vision board. Oh, this is in process. Wonderful. Thank you so much. You know, it's like you're creating that flow. And of course, when you do this, when you're with your little baby, your yeah. your heart is open, right? Yeah. So um, do things with an open heart, yeah. right? Um, and be grateful for every step along the way. And some things really manifest much later. There are yeah. things that I put on my vision board literally 20 years ago when I had no idea. And you, one of the things I learned, never question the how, yeah. right? Never question how to do things, right? And we, we were just talking about Hawaii, Right. And so I remember um, many years ago, I was sick. I was in bed and I was like looking at my next six months. So I made a little vision board and one was to go to Hawaii. And so I was just looking at my vision board and visualizing I was in Hawaii. Three weeks later, somebody called me out of the blue. This was before Internet um, and said, look, um, I heard about you. And I had this dream, I have to offer you my house, a private bay in um, in Hawaii, in Kauai. And she said, um, can you come in two weeks? Because then it's two weeks available. And I was like really sick in bed. So my husband really with a wheelchair brought me, you know, in the airplane. I was that sick. And um, I totally recovered for two weeks in a private bay in Hawaii. And I just Amazing. visualized it three weeks. So from that moment on, I knew I don't question the how, right? Yeah. Um, I didn't even have the money to fly there. Then money came falling out of the sky, literally, like things started coming to me. And so I started understanding it's all about how you connect in with um, your wishes, with your goals. Uh, the fact that you already have placed them in your environment, that's why the vision boards are so strong or the magic boards, because you place them there. But how you connect with it, how you constantly live that, it, it, you're creating your own reality. And then the universe delivers. But the more your house is organized, the more it's decluttered, the easier it is to, for the universe to bring things to you. Yeah. And um, you said um, success is one area and then a relationship as well. So what would you say do people wrong regarding to feng shui and relationship? And what can we change uh, in our environment to, to well, maybe attract the partner or to be in a yes. healthy relationship? Great. So um, I always would focus on the bedroom for a romantic relationship. So I always say, first of all, when you come into your bedroom, what hangs above your headboard? Yeah. Whatever hangs above your headboard is the first focus you will have when you come in. And so make sure it's a loving relationship. Um, if you're in a partnership, put a picture of you and the partner, put two hearts up, try to avoid uh, water images because they kind of create a lot of communications problems. Don't put images up of like um, animals um, because, you know, like I have seen sometimes people putting two tigers up or two elephants. And I'm like, just imagine your subconscious doesn't make a difference between the image and reality. So think about it when you're in your bedroom. Whatever is there is a reality for your subconscious. So if you have images of single people there or images of uh, two elephants there, then if two elephants are there, would you make love? You would not even dare making love. They're too, you know, too taking too much energy or two horses, right? So, or I've seen people having images of their family, a lot of family pictures in their bedroom. I'm saying, Would you make love when all your family is watching? No, you wouldn't, right? So be careful. Start thinking more that everything that is there is reflecting. Make sure if you're single that there's space for another partner. So make sure there's two pillows, there's space in the cabinet, there's space in the uh, bathroom closet. Um, so everywhere show that there's two nightstands, two lamps, so that there is your time universe. Hey, there's space in the bed 
for another person to come into my life, the space in my closets for somebody to move in. So start thinking in a different way about your environment. And of course, then check out on uh, the website, the free energy report, because there we talk about your personal relationship direction. And that is key. So what is in your personal relationship direction in your bedroom right now? Yeah, if there is Literally last week I saw somebody and they had an image of a, a horse, just one horse, like a statue. And I said, well, um, you know, this is not really a symbol of love. I said, but I love horses. I said, yeah, but, you know, you're not having a relationship with horses, <laughs> right? So, I mean, it's really interesting. You have to be that detailed. You have to go deeper into that. And then people will see there are some next steps that they will receive um, after going to get their report. There will be some more videos that I'll guide them through some more steps. Amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. And so and I think which is so, so interesting about it is that um, we are so often so unconscious about the environment we create right yeah we put there a statue of a horse because we like horses but we're not aware of what you just said that your brain your subconsciousness does something with that information coming in and translating it to your reality again and yeah that's really interesting well i just want to give you a point on what you just uh if i look at your visual right now so i see you but above you i see ich bin erfüllt yeah, yeah? So um, this is actually, I really love that, to be honest, <laughs> it's just above you. So it's not important just for you. It's important for the viewers because the, you're actually giving all the time the message, ich bin erfüllt. I feel fulfilled. Yeah, I feel fulfilled about this interview. I feel fulfilled uh, about connecting with her. So you're giving, I mean, you even see then ein Glücksmagnet. Yeah, yeah. Ein Glücksmagnet. so I, I'm a lucky magnet for you. Yeah. Right, these are like the two that show up the strongest, right? Um, I just yeah. love that. Yeah, yeah this is the best subliminal message I have seen for a while in interviews. Really good. <laughs> So, but for example, you see that I have books behind me, right? Yes, yes. yes. So, um, so there are some books, of course, they can find on the website to help them to go to the next level with this. So the Energy Number book and the Transform Your Life book, they are like the basic books for my yes. experience of my work. But I put them there, right, because it actually... It gives a subliminal message for people, right? But I love yours better. Thank you. Yeah, we, I, I send it to you if you want to. <laughs> you can have one. <laughs> oh, love that. No, this is really good because I have seen sometimes interviews and um, from people and they have they put an image behind them and they think, oh, it looks lovely, but actually it gives the wrong message for the viewers. Yeah. That's so I, I thought that was really good. That's interesting. Yeah, I, I did it actually totally subconsciously. I just put it there because I they are all my affirmations uh, that I love. So I put them in a poster and I read them. It's my office here and I read them every day. So, um. <laughs> but, but you are actually sharing that yeah, energy it's amazing. Yeah. to the viewers. Yeah. So I just really love what you yeah, just did. Nice. I really like it. Um, and so the the third part you said is health, right? Uh, yeah. Which is also, so, so what yeah, can we do about the health? So the health direction, um, once you know your personal direction, you will always place in your health direction some things that activate your health. Could be books, they are positive books. It could be crystals, could be fresh plants. You will see, you will get some some tips you can place there. And your health direction, definitely you need to declutter. You cannot have any clutter in that health direction. Sometimes you also have to look not just from the center of uh, a living room or the center of an office or a bedroom but the center of your house let's say your garage is in your health direction your garage is one big mess then don't be surprised your health has issues so making sure then that you are um decluttering your that area or if it's like the bedroom of your son and your son has always a lot of mess right or a lot of images of violence or you know fighting or dinosaurs or whatever all what is there will have affected you that is how the quantum physics field works right mm -hmm. so i remember this one woman and she her daughter um her relationship her health direction was where her daughter and her daughter you know a lot of teenagers 
you know, they throw all their clothes on the ground, right? And she said, I refuse to pick up her clothes. And I said, I understand, but so we opened the door and I'm like, I can't even get to the bed. You know, there's just so much clothes. I said, you better actually pick it up because it affects your health. She said, but I'm not sleeping there. I said, no, but through the quantum physics field, this is your health direction. She said, it's really interesting. Since she started doing that, my health started really going down. And when she was young, everything was organized. And I said, well, you have to explain to her, you know, what the effect is. And she started explaining that to her daughter. And her daughter was so moved by that that she really started picking things up. Wow. And she said, my health improved so much. Yeah. So it's not just where you sleep and where you work. It's also, you know, the people around you can actually, with their mess or with their wrong pictures, can affect you because everything is a resonant field. And... Um, what I think is so interesting about your own story of your life, that you were a lawyer, and I can imagine that you have this very logical part inside of you, because I think yeah. you have to be some sort of logical to become a lawyer, <laughs> yeah. else it's, it's very difficult. <laughs> and yeah. um, But now you talk um, about the quantum field, you talk about energy, um, about all the spiritual um, world that is surrounding us, and For everyone, because um, one reason why I do this podcast is that I have the strong um, vision for myself and for the world to get more spiritually connected and not to think about spirituality, that it's something woo-woo or whatever, yes. but that to, to just raise the consciousness that this is as real as you see me. <laughs> yeah. Um, so um, I would just... Um, would love to 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 ask you what does the quantum field mean to you and also maybe um was it i mean you said you were very spiritual you had a spiritual teacher with seven so uh, probably there was also something that was always there for you but um maybe also for the people of your family um how Yeah. what does the quantum field mean to you and how was it for you to get in alignment like with your own spirituality and to combine mm. like your rational side and your spiritual side okay well that's a beautiful question so um for me i grew up with seeing energy so even before i was seven i always could see how everything related with each other that was uh, for me the quantum field was something very visible so um, I would come into a house, I would see people and I could see their chakras and their aura field and I could see how these aura fields would morph with each other where there would be this connection. I, I could see, um, I still remember um, my, um, my father and my mother as a child when I was two, I could see how their chakras were, there was this vibration connecting between these two chakras. So, And it was the sexual chakra, but I had no idea what that meant, of course, at two years old. But I was like, why is that on that level, right? So probably they just had made love that day, right? I, I did not know what that meant. But um, I could see then when people were like angry, like um, and how their energy would come from their belly. And I could see this dark energy coming out of their chakras. And I felt affecting me. So I, for me... I always saw the quantum field as a child, yeah? So later on, I learned how to close this off when I could, when I was nine, because it's it's not livable to see it all the time. And I can open it up. That's one of the, the, the works I do, is I can look into people's energy. But um, the whole field was that it was very visible, Like It's not like something I learned first from an analytical perspective, right? I, I, I first saw everything. Right. And um, that is for me um, when I come into a room, for example, and I'm speaking to a public, um, I open that up again and I see immediately the energy fields of everyone. And then I always lead them into a meditation to clear the fields. Yeah, because um, people come with a lot of stress, a lot of pain, a lot of sadness. And I raise right away the vibration into their field. And so as I raise the vibration, immediately people start feeling better. Some people start crying. So it's just I raise the vibration, clear the energy. And so I make the quantum field filled with light because the quantum field is is I would say almost like an etheric an, an energy grid that is neutral right and it's what we place in the grid yeah 
through thoughts, through feelings, through actions, through energy, that uh, it will take it on what it is. So it's almost like if you think about a crystal, you know, a crystal is neutral, comes from the earth. You can activate it um, to make it very positive. You can use the crystal for putting data on it, uh, whatever data it is, it will take on that energy. So quantum field for me, it is a, it's almost like um, a grid, yeah? And um, almost like when you look at a microchip, you know, a microchip that is blank, there's a crystal also in it. So um, you put data on it and then it becomes alive. So the quantum field for me is a grid that because we live in it, because we work in it, it takes on some of that energy, but it resonates. It's like a, what we call in the quantum physics field, the, the wave the wave theory. It waves, it, it resonates, it passes on to other people that then are in that grid and react to it. Yeah. So this is how I always saw it yeah, as a child, before I even knew that there was a term, knowledge to it called quantum physics. So when I started, uh, when I was 15, I started really studying all about this and understanding um, there is a logical part to it. So I always start from the level of energy um, because I first see things, I first experience things, and then I always want to know the logical part. Is there somewhere in the world that there's a logical part to this? So when I knew that I changed my bedroom and I changed the colors, I was like, okay, this is all working, right? I understand that. Now, is there somewhere in the world, some of that explained it, right? Because that's the, the logical part in me. I want to explain it. I want to share it with people, right? I cannot teach you how to see the energy because that's probably a gift I have, right? I think you can see it, you can study it to a certain part, but it's a natural gift I have. So I cannot show you what I see because that's, that's something happening in me. But I can teach you how to understand, to have the results of what I see. Yeah. So that is how I always brought the spiritual energetic part together with the logical part, because also for myself, I want to understand It's like, um, OK, this is what's going on. Now I see this is connected and this. But I always love want to see the whole picture of things. Yeah. Um, and in that way, I'm a seer, but I'm also somebody that um, I still have that analytical mind of me that says like I want to bring that together so I really believe we are now in a time where the people that were analytical very focused are opening themselves up to the intuitive like through mindfulness through meditation through following their gut and their I mean there's a lot of opening up from the analytical to the intuitive side of the brain but there's also right now and I believe that's part of what I also bring is to explain people that are very intuitive and energetic and spiritual to become more practical and to be more, not dogmatic, but more structural. Yeah. So I, I always feel like I'm, I'm like in the middle. It's really interesting. As a child, I was um, I can write left and right at the same time. So um, I have my left and right brain very in harmony. Yeah. And so I always feel like I talk to businesses and companies and I bring them from the analytical to the very intuitive side. And then I have a lot of intuitive people that I bring to the very practical side. Mm -hmm. So I'm a very practical spiritual teacher. It's not all about meditation. It's all about, OK, you study meditation, but what can you do practically right away to make a difference? That's amazing. Thank you so much for for explaining and um, I have one question I ask every of my interview guests. And the question is, you imagine it's the last day of your life. You had a beautiful, fulfilled life. Everything was just perfect. Uh, you inspired more than 500 million people and you really did your thing. Um, but there has been a techni techni uh, technological problem and all your books are deleted. Your website is deleted. There's nothing left. And I come to you and I say, Marie, so sorry, there has been an accident. <laughs> uh, nothing, nothing is left there. And I bring you a white sheet of paper and a pen. And I would tell you if nothing else is left and you would have this paper and this pen and you could write down three wisdoms that you would like people to know, things you learned in your life, what would you write down on this paper? 
Well, I would actually just write one sentence that I always say to everyone, all my love to all of you. Oh, that's beautiful. That's amazing. Because Thank I believe so much. the only thing yeah. that with others is love. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's beautiful. And for everyone who's listening right now and who wants to get in touch with you, you already said on your website that they can download the, their energy number. So I will put that link in the show notes. For everyone who wants to go even deeper, you have the books. Uh, probably they, they are probably not in German yet, or are they? Uh, no, no unfortunately yet. not. Okay. Uh, of course, there's online courses. Everything yeah. is English. There's a Spanish uh, market too. Um, so I would just say, um, you know, try to connect. And hopefully, you know, um, I will have more uh, German um, students coming my way so that we can definitely translate I mean, something. I can imagine that after the podcast, there are many people who would also like to attend maybe a seminar with you. So maybe we could talk about you coming to Germany, we're doing a seminar. That would be amazing because I also would really like to learn more about it. Well, okay. I would love that. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's on my goal list for this year. Okay. <laughs> so, maybe we can make that happen. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, All right. Thank, was you, fun. And thank you for asking the question about the quantum physics field. I think that's a very powerful question you yeah. asked. And I would say, ich bin erfüllt. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All the best for you. Thank you.